Louis L'Amour's <laughs> classic Hondo, and on here it says, best Western novel I have ever read, John Wayne. How did that come about? Well, actually, that came about while we were doing The Rebel, and of course it involves uh, John Wayne. I, uh, I had a cutter, Otho Lovering, probably the greatest editor who ever lived, a little fella, he looked like the actor Jimmy Gleason, and he had cut Stagecoach for John Ford and John Wayne, and he cut four or five other John Ford pictures, and uh, he, uh, he, and in my office, I had a huge portrait of, of uh, from, it curled from the ceiling all the way down the wall and onto the floor of John Wayne as Honda with the dog Sam. Well, I'm working in my office and I always left the door ajar so, so I could see who the hell was skylarking out there. And uh, all of a sudden, Arthur sticks his head in the, in, the, in the door and he says, Hey, AJ, there's a fella out here who'd like to come in and say hello to you. Is it okay if I bring him in? I said, yeah, bring the son of a bitch in. So I go back down and I, here comes Otho, little fella, and in comes the biggest man, the biggest anything I've ever seen in my life, and it's John Wayne himself. Well, he sticks his mitt out, big as a ham hock. We shake hands, exchange ple pleasantries, and he says how much he likes the rebel. He said, on Sunday night when I'm home, I always watch it. So, but Arthur says, hey, Duke, Duke, see there, that's what I was telling you about. See, there you are, it's Hondo, that, that, that big photograph of you. Duke says, yeah, it's one of my favorite pictures. The rights to it come back to me in a couple of years. Boom! Uh, I said, yeah, and uh, he, he was very friendly. We got to be friends, not as good of friends as we were later on during Chisholm all those years. But anyhow, he would uh, come onto the set, say hello. In the, he came into the projection room, sat next to Arthur and me, and there was the other people around there. And he said, I hope you don't mind my watching your dailies because uh, I may want to get into this television business myself someday. Well, I remembered that, too. That's how it began. No, I had uh, a very good property called The Wrong Man, Private Eye. And when I was at Paramount, I was going to do it with Lee Marvin. He had done M Squad. And he saw me, he liked me, I liked him, we got along fine. I couldn't understand half what the hell he was talking about, but I kept nodding. Anyhow, but he comes into the office one day and he's dressed in a Western costume, Lee Marvin. And he said, uh, I'm sorry, AJ, he says, but I, 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 I'm not going to do the wrong man. Oh, I said, well, I'm sorry too, why not? He said, I'm not going to do any more television. I'm going to be a feature star. I said, really? That's good. He said, yeah, I just came just came in from wardrobe, he said, John Ford is doing a, a picture with John Wayne and me, and it's called The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance, and I'm Liberty Valance. That's my steak, Valance. But you heard him, dude. Pick it up. I said you, Liberty. You pick it up. So I said, fine. He turns around, starts to go out, he said, wait a minute, wait a minute. I see that he's got a dagger stuck in the belt in the back of his outfit. And I said, wait, Lee, what the hell is that dagger for? He says, you know, Pappy, John Ford, asked me the same question down in wardrobe. You know what I told him? I said, no, what did you tell him? I said, Pappy, that's for exits. I'll tell you the story of Louis L'Amour and Hondo, and I'll make it as brief as possible. Uh, and, and not as damaging as it could be. <laughs> Uh, he, uh, uh, Louis L'Amour, when hardly anybody knew him, wrote a story called The Gift of Cochise. Bat Jack, that was Wayne Fellows then, had bought it. And Duke, Duke had done a picture called, you know, The Angel and the Bad Man. There was a heavy in it called Hondo. And he always said, you know what, I like that word Hondo. Someday I'm going to do a picture and I'm going to be Hondo. Well, he got James Edward Grant, one of the great Western writers of all times. And he said, look, Jimmy, we got to do something with this. They changed everything from the title on down. In uh, A Gift of Cochise, there was nobody named Hondo. There was no dog named Sam. There was no Indian chief named Vittoro. Out of whole cloth, Duke and Jimmy Grant created the script for Hondo, and it was a, a magnificent script. It came out the same time that Shane did, but I think that Hondo's a better picture, and sometime I'll tell you why. Anyhow, 
The, the first 10 minutes of that picture are absolutely Shakespearean. You bake today, and smell fresh bread. It and, and the high and the mighty were the two highest grossing pictures that he did under contract to, uh, to Warner Brothers. They got their money back faster than anything else. So anyhow, they shoot the picture. They shoot it down in Camargo, and it's a big success. Big success. Even before it's out, the word, the word is out that this is going to be something big. So Duke gets an idea. He said, look, he takes the script that Jimmy Grant wrote, and he goes over to or sends the, the script to Louis L'Amour. He says, look, Louis, the whole damn thing is there. Write it as a novel. You know, you can sit down and do it in 15 minutes. Write it as a novel, and I'll endorse it. And so Louis L'Amour wrote it, and here, now Duke had his own uh, uh, publication, his own publishing house, and you see Louis L'Amour's <laughs> classic Hondo, and on here it says, best Western novel I have ever read, John Wayne. And since then, from that, Louis L'Amour took off. And that was his first novel, Louis L'Amour's first well, novel. Yeah, yeah, but you know what? He wrote the same damn plot time and time again. <laughs> Instead of Honda, we'd call it Shalico or some goddamn thing. But then he was a good writer and he did a lot of research and had people working for him. Uh, but that was his path to glory. At MGM, there was a fellow under contract there, not for a lot of money, but a decent, decent contract named Ralph Tager. Now, I knew Ralph. We worked out together at Paramount. He was at Paramount for a while. When I saw this guy in the carpetbaggers, I couldn't take my eyes off of him. He played Buzz. Not a real big part, but boy, he had everything. He was charming. He had sex appeal. He had every damn thing. And we used to work out together in the gym. And I'd look at him. And he was built like Tarzan. He looked something like Randolph Scott. And he had a voice like Humphrey Bogart. I, if that guy wasn't a television star, I never met one. And this is the wrong man we're still this talking This is the about. wrong man, right. It's <laughs> W period R-O-N-G, William Wrong. Anyhow, so I shot a 10-minute uh, presentation, four scenes that I had written, and Ralph was terrific. But then uh, the, the, the gong went off, and I remembered what Duke said about Hondo, and it was more than two years had passed. So I go to Alan Courtney, he's in charge of television there, Bob Whiteman is running the studio, and I say, Alan, how would you like to make a deal with Bat Jack to do one of their features as a series? He said, uh, what, what? he looked at it and he said, yeah, it's great, but I don't know how you make a series out of it. I said, well, I do. <laughs> he said, run with it. I go to Michael Wayne at Bat Jack, and I say, look, you've got Hondo here, it's, it's lying fallow, here's a chance to make some money. We, we, we can do it over there at MGM, which is a first-class outfit. You guys will make some money going in. We'll give you some money for the rights to it, and you'll have a percentage. It ended up they had 25%, I had 25%, MGM had uh, 50%. Melnick came up to me from ABC, and he said, Hey, hey, I understand you're going to do Hondo. I said, Yeah. He said, well, I'll tell you something, Andy. He said, look, we got three private eye shows on the air already. We got three or four pilots lined up. He said, if you're going to do Hondo, would you consider using Ralph as Hondo? And I said, would I? Would I? Would I? Yeah. So that's how Ralph got, got involved in that. I said, look, fellas. We shoot an hour pilot, you know we're going to be losing money. They're not going to give us the money that we're going to spend on the pilot. It's an hour pilot, then maybe nobody will see it if it doesn't sell, and it's done for. I know how we can get in the black right from the beginning. I said, yeah, that sounds interesting. How? I said, we do a two-hour movie, a feature film. I go to Bob Whiteman and Courtney. We have lunch together. Whiteman said to me, look, you got, you're getting, lining up a pretty good cast for this feature. And uh, he said, but you know what? You haven't got a star. you got to get a star. And I said, w what star? He said, uh, Robert Taylor. I said, Robert Taylor? Quo Vadis, Camille, Johnny Eager. He's, he's going to, he's going to, there's no part in this for him. Whiteman says, let him play Gallagher. I said, Gallagher, Gallagher, I was thinking about Jim Davis doing Gallagher, and you want me to try and get Robert Taylor? He said, try, we'll pay him the money. We know how much he gets. Get him. He said, all right, I'll get him. 
well, I didn't want to go through his agent. But uh, Jimmy Drury, who was a good friend of mine, is a friend of Robert Taylor's. He gave me Taylor's telephone number. I call him up at home, and Mr. Taylor answers the phone himself. I said, Mr. Taylor, my name is Andrew Fennedy. He says, oh, yeah, yeah, I know about you. Well, what's on your mind? I said, well, sir, we're going to do a feature, and it's also going to be a pilot, and uh, uh, we'd like you to read the script. If you, if, if you would read the script, and we'll, we'll pay your price. Uh, and he said, well, uh, all right, send it over. So I send it over, and I figure, well, I'll never hear from that man again. That's hello and goodbye. But he called. He called, and he said, Andrew, I really like this script. He loved Westerns, too, didn't oh, he? Oh, he did a lot of Westerns. Uh, absolutely. He played Billy the Kid at one time. Anyhow, he said, I'd like to talk to you about it. Can we have lunch? And I said, yeah. You want to come over here? Sure. Uh, he said, but let's not eat in the commissary. I said, all right. So I made arrangements. They eat near Courtney's office. They had it catered and all that. <laughs> and Taylor is a chain smoker. So so is Courtney. I have got my cigar. Cigars are harmless, though. Anyhow, <laughs> through this cloud of smoke, I, I said to Taylor, I said, I understand why you don't want to go into the commissary. You'll probably get mobbed. And he said, no, no, that's not it. And I said, why? He said, too many ghosts. Oh, the gables and the garbos and all of Anyhow, but he said, look, fellas, I would like to play Hondo. Wow. Well, Courtney and I looked at each other because we had mentioned him as Hondo to the network before Tager. And they said, nah, 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 he's too old, he's too this, he's too that. So I said, well, I'm sorry, sir, but uh, that part's already cast. But look, I'm working on the part of Gallagher that we sent you. And I'm going to put a son in there for you to have conflict with the son. And you're going to have a strike at the mine. And he said, Andy, 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 look, he said. My agent will probably kill me, he said, but I'll do this. Uh, but don't screw up your script on account of me. I'll do it. And that's how we got Robert Taylor. I'll tell you something now. Well, you tell me, Krantz. Is the Army going to protect the mine? He's studying on it. But it looks like we might have to protect ourselves. Not me. Not you is right, you jelly spine. You're fired. Why, you... <laughs> From the beginning, was we had Michael Rennie, we had Gary Merrill, uh, we had Bill Bryant who got demoted from being General Grant to being Colonel Crook. Uh, we had Kathy Brown. Jim Davis still. Jim Davis played the Jim Davis part. <laughs> and uh, uh, we had the little kid, Buddy Foster, who was terrific. Run, the soldiers are leaving. Come on and watch. And he had a sister who used to keep hanging around. And, was that uh, Jody? You might have heard. Yeah, <laughs> Jody Foster. She was wow. there all the time. Wow. <laughs> Anyhow, and uh, uh, Gary Clark was in it from the Virginians, and John Smith, who from, was from Laramie. From absolutely. You're drunk. Yeah, I'm drunk. I'm drunk, and you don't like the smell of whiskey. Uh, Michael Pate, well, he was, he, he, wasn't he was great in the, in the he, feature. He was, he was Vittoro in the picture, and he was Vittoro with us. It really so. gave it a big production value to have the, the star from Hondo yeah. as, as your chief antagonist. The whites are learning to live with each other. The red man and white man must do the same thing. My son speaks what is in my heart. Vittoro will make a beginning. We also had uh, Hank Warden oh, and, Nick, and Nick Dennis. Was uh, Noah Barry Pidge in the oh, pilot? Oh, well, he was a running character, absolutely. He, he was, was the, great. the Ward Bond type character, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, 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 but he was a little bit more gentle. When I called his agent, yeah. uh, Meyer Mishkin, Meyer Meyer Pants on Fire, I said, hey, I want to use uh, uh, Pidge Berry. And he said, is this for a feature or for a uh, television? He said, you know what, it's funny. He gets more for television than he does. I said, Meyer, Meyer, here's what we got. He said, you, you just bought a pigeon. Anyhow, and he was wonderful. Oh, sure, wonderful. he is. He really yeah. is. You going to do some drinking? Yep. Want some company? Nope. Adios, brother. Say, Ando, I heard about what happened to Dow. Oh! 